The next Mass Effect game will connect to Andromeda in some capacity. The trailers and teasers haven't been subtle, and neither has project director Mike Gamble, who has all but confirmed this on his Twitter. So the bigger question is, how can the original trilogy and Andromeda be connected? And while there is actually several answers to this question, the biggest and most important connection between the Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy is a telescope created by the Geth. Known as the Kalos Array, the Geth telescope is a gigantic Geth structure made with three Mass Effect relays joined together by strange technology. This strange technology is possibly ReaperTech considering the timeline, but it's currently unknown how exactly this telescope was constructed or exactly how old it is. The image here shows the telescope itself, and you can see the weird way that the mass relays are pointing inward towards each other. Because of this, the telescope has the power to observe intergalactic distances in almost real time. And this is exactly how the Andromeda Initiative found the Andromeda Galaxy, and more specifically, the Helios Cluster. When you play Andromeda, you can speak to Suvi and ask her questions about the Initiative science team, and she explains that the Geth rebuilt a mass relay and turned the relay approach into a faster-than-light sensor, meaning the telescope is even faster than faster-than-light and was able to provide the almost real-time images that were needed to find the habitable Helios Cluster. This is explained more in the comic Mass Effect Discovery, where we first meet Tyrion Kandros. He's on a mission to find out exactly what the Andromeda Initiative is up to, and his mission is to find Shioleth Vas Navara. He isn't sure why he's supposed to find him, but eventually learns that it is because of his discovery of the Geth Telescope and the Initiative wanting this information. There's a whole story about how they find Shioleth, but ultimately they do end up finding him and Shioleth reveals what he found out about the Geth Telescope to Gian Garson, the billionaire behind the Andromeda Initiative. He goes on to explain that the Geth used this telescope to get star charts, equations, and images of deep space and were searching for something beyond the Milky Way galaxy, but he didn't know what they were searching for. There isn't a lot of known details about the Kalos Array, but it definitely pushes the boundaries of what we currently know about technology in the Mass Effect universe. One amongst many interesting things about this telescope is that it tells us that both moving relays is possible and that what we know of their potential uses is very limited. We already know that the Mu relay from Mass Effect 1 was moved out of its orbit because of a supernova, and we know that the Charon relay was encased in ice and thought to be a moon while it was still orbiting Pluto before its reactivation. So moving relays is possible, but we haven't seen any relays used like this. It's important to remember that the mass relays were created by the Reapers as a way to control and manipulate the species of the galaxy. The relays that were activated were used to guide civilizations to grow and evolve in ways that the Reapers intended. The relays were also used to accelerate the development of the races within the Milky Way galaxy, thus shortening the time between Reaper harvest. The Reapers only activated specific relays that were for civilizations deemed advanced enough to even harvest. There are also several mass relays that were not activated and are still laying dormant. This ultimately means that there is still a lot of unexplored space that we know nothing about. We also don't really know if this Geth telescope was one of the many relays destroyed from the blast of the Crucible, but it doesn't seem like it was actually connected to the larger relay network and was built as its own entity, so I'm going to assume that it wasn't destroyed. So what does this Geth telescope mean for the next Mass Effect game? BioWare has already revealed a new mass relay. We see one being built in the clip released from last year, but we don't know any details about who created it, where it is located, and where it is connected to. But it does seem like at this point, someone, possibly humans, have been able to build their own mass relays instead of using the relays created by the Reapers. I do think it would be kind of cathartic if the species of the Milky Way galaxy came together to rebuild their own mass relay network as a way to kind of take back what the Reapers took from them, and to know that some terrifying AI cockroaches aren't going to reappear in 50,000 years to harvest them again. The Geth Telescope also opens up a ton of possibilities story-wise. They could write really anything revolving around this telescope. Maybe the Geth did find something and they were able to travel somewhere outside of the Milky Way galaxy as a way to survive. Maybe because of studying the technology that the Geth used to construct this telescope, 
we were able to travel to both unseen places before and travel at new speeds. This telescope still doesn't really change the timeline issue between the original trilogy and Andromeda though, as Andromeda is already established time-wise. We know that the initiative was able to look at the Helios cluster in real time, but that would have been the real time of 2185 when the initiative actually launched. So even if this telescope was being used by someone in the original trilogy timeline to look at Andromeda, the initiative and writer still wouldn't even be there until 633 years later. If the next game does follow closely to the events of Mass Effect 3, this Geth telescope could be a way to connect Andromeda in a prequel sort of way. The Scourge could connect to the cut Dark Energy plot. We know the Geth were looking into Dark Energy and the Dying Stars. And we know that the Scourge wasn't visible when the initiative left for Andromeda, but appeared between their departure from the Milky Way galaxy and their arrival in Andromeda 633 years later. So what if this carried over into the Andromeda Scourge plot, and we see the beginning formations of the Scourge through the telescope? In Andromeda, we learn that the Scourge was created when the Jardan and an unknown alien species went to war around the year 2450, and that the Scourge was the result of a weapon detonating on Key to Sira, a remnant space station. But this is all that we know about the Scourge. Even though the Scourge happened 264 years after Mass Effect 3, because there isn't a lot known about the Scourge, Bioware could still fill in the gaps and make it connected to the Dark Energy plot. There's not a lot of concrete information known about the Scourge, but there is speculation that it could be dark matter or an artificial synthetic creation. The only thing that we do know is that the Reapers are not the source of the Scourge, confirmed by Mac Walters in an interview. And if you're not familiar with the scrap dark energy concept from Mass Effect 3, Mass Effect writer Drew Karpishin spoke about some possible explored concepts with VGS in an interview back from 2014, which I'll link below. But essentially it revolved around dark energy usage being the cause of a type of global warming effect on the universe. The Reapers were actually harvesting species every 50,000 years to try to slow down the dark energy that was being used by the species of the galaxy because it was killing the universe. The Reapers were essentially trying to stop the death of the universe, the big crunch as Drew called it. The Reapers needed someone to use biotics since they couldn't and humans were going to be the saviors. Drew mentions that it wasn't very fleshed out because they decided to go in a different direction, but it's clear that in Mass Effect 2, dark energy was going to be relevant in some capacity. In Mass Effect 2, Tally mentions how she is investigating Haystrom star Dolan. Dolan was dying at an accelerated rate because the dark energy was reducing the mass of the star's interior. Not much comes of this story plot and it is dropped in Mass Effect 3, but this could be an easy way to connect the two galaxies while also continuing a story thread that I know a lot of fans were wanting to have expanded upon. I think this Geth telescope could also open the possibility of time travel if the writers decided to go that route, but I really hope they don't. I don't see the need for time travel to exist within the Mass Effect universe, and I also think that majority of the time, time travel is used as a lazy plot device. So while this telescope opens unlimited possibilities, I hope it stays more grounded if they do decide to use this telescope in the next game story. There could also be a connection to the discovery of the Jardan, which we know nothing about. There are currently a lot of inactive relays, and we don't know where they go and we don't know what's on the other side. So realistically, we could activate any of these relays and find a new species of alien and places uninhabited by the Reapers. This possibility of meeting a new species could also be why we see the 314 in the mass relay clip. 314 references the first contact war, also known as the Relay 314 incident, where humans activated a dormant mass relay, Relay 314, which resulted in a three-month conflict between the Systems Alliance and the Turian hierarchy. Maybe the next game is us activating relays and finding humanity in another first contact situation. We know that the Reapers kept these dormant relays inactive for a reason, and that was because they deemed these species not advanced enough. But who knows what could be on the other side of those relays? And I really do wonder if there are relays connecting to outside of the Milky Way galaxy. I personally always thought that the Reapers being isolated to just the Milky Way galaxy was a bit odd, so maybe there's more to it. There's also a lot of speculation regarding the mass relay clip surrounding Liara working with the Geth. Since we hear audio of Liara speaking and a Geth speaking, 
And I actually don't think she is speaking with the Geth. I think the Geth are listening to a conversation Liara is having with someone else and the Geth are speaking amongst themselves. Maybe this Geth telescope has opened up new ways to communicate and observe other species in the galaxy. The technology that the Geth had access to was really untapped by the end of Mass Effect 3, and with them seemingly returning, it opens up a lot of possibilities with technology. We also weren't given much time with Legion, who is probably my favorite companion next to Liara. We can only recruit him later into Mass Effect 2, and he is absent from all of Mass Effect 3, and he was such an interesting companion. It would be stupid of Bioware to not expand upon the Geth, regardless of which ending is canon or relevant to the story. And I think we're already seeing that. The Geth have been shown in majority of the teasers, even more so than Liara. So ultimately, I think Bioware knows there's a lot that they can do and explore with them. And this telescope is just one more thing that they can explore. It can add to the technical possibilities surrounding mass relays regarding travel, exploration, discoveries, and serves as a possible way to connect the two games and make the Mass Effect universe feel more connected. The reality of where we're at with the Mass Effect series is that Andromeda really is somewhat of a roadblock that the team is going to have to overcome when it comes to the timeline, especially if they're planning on finding a way to incorporate both galaxies' stories into the next game like we're seeing evidence of. I think Andromeda's story takes place so far into the future because they didn't want to finalize any answers of Mass Effect 3's ending. And ultimately, if we're revisiting the original trilogy in any capacity, they're going to have to answer a lot of questions to be able to move the galaxy forward. But they can really write absolutely whatever they want to connect the stories and the timelines. There's a lot of possibilities here, and Andromeda has a ton of questions that were left unresolved. So what do you think of this telescope? What possibilities do you see it unlocking for the next game? And would you like to see the return of the dark energy concept? Let me know in the comments and thank you for watching.